So my mother was the first woman in Multas history to write a political column in the papers. She was also the first person to write using her own name rather than anonymously. So people wrote anonymously out of fear of, of violent reprisals at the time. It seems like any, any job, but to be able to do that in Malta required this incredible force of personality and this total conviction in what you considered right and what you considered wrong. It was always the same thing that motivated her. It was this sense of injustice and this sense of outrage, I think. So my mother grew up in a Malta that was really restricted. It was a really controlling state and growing up in that environment you either accept that as normal, as a way of living and you, you sort of work with it or around it or you, you just refuse to accept it. She refused to accept that it should be controlled by corrupt people and corrupt institutions and she set out to change it. The main reason that she started that blog was she felt very restricted writing for a newspaper that, like most Maltese newspapers, is editorially quite conservative in what it allows its writers to say. So before my mother was killed on the 16th of October last year, she was working on four major stories. The people who my mother was reporting on, they're still there. Um, they're still, you know, they're still in government, they're still part of the state apparatus and they have little interest in a much broader inquiry into what happened to my mother. So there are a lot of interests working against justice, unfortunately. Some of the people who my mother investigated as a journalist are now involved in her own murder investigation. So it's hard to have confidence that everyone has a shared interest in uncovering what really happened. We are hoping that this inquiry looks more seriously at what happened to Malta, what happened to Malta so that it became a place where you can detonate a bomb powerful enough to take down a skyscraper on a Monday afternoon. And I think we in Malta really need to look at what happened, why we have become so systemically corrupt. We need to start recognizing corruption as really a major defining problem of our time. It's literally costing lives and we need to talk more about this. Thankfully, more and more journalists through the Daphne project, they are banding together and they are, they are taking a stand against these attacks. And I, I hope that governments and all institutions that can and should do something about this also join in this fight. I think that if my mother were alive to receive this award, she would feel a sense of relief, first of all, that other people also care. Other people care about her and her work, and other people care about the issues on which she's reporting. That she isn't, in fact, alone in this fight. I would want my mother to know just how important she is as an individual, just how incredibly powerful she is and continues to be, and that she really set an example not just for my brothers and me, but I think for a large part of the world. I would want her to know that she will continue to provide that example and that she will continue to be a deeply loved and valued human being.